Jimmy McRae, Russell Brooks and Bertie Fisher can beat the so far all-conquering quattro of reigning world champion Hanno Mikola. Jimmy, partnered by Mike Nicholson, is in the AC Delco sponsored car, lies third in the championship and is in a relaxed and confident mood. The weather he feels will help him and as a past winner he must be in with a good chance of victory. Teammate Russell Brooks has Mike Broad alongside. They are second in the championship, carrying, of course, the Andrews Heat for Hire sponsorship on their car. This has been Russell's first season in the Manta, and once he got to grips with it, was right up with Jimmy. Russell admits that there's a personal battle between them for the honour of top General Motors driver. Completing the trio, Bertie Fisher and Austin McHale from Northern Ireland. They have thousands of Irish spectators urging them on. And whilst the win is perhaps not as certain for him as his two teammates, he's certain to be well up the leaderboard at the finish. In contrast, Brooks is quickly into his stride, setting fastest time on the first two stages. Swapping times with him, teammate McRae, who reckoned to have been held up by sheep on the road on the fog-shrouded first stage. He nevertheless is holding second place behind Brooks after four stages. Bertie Fisher, in the brand new Manta, completed only the day before, is having trouble with his brakes. He doesn't have any. He'll a Sartfield hairpin on special stage five. Jimmy McRae, now running first car, sets fastest time. Brooks storms into view, having had a puncture only a couple of miles into the stage, losing him almost three minutes whilst he changed the wheel. Sundstrom follows him through the hairpin, having just been overtaken. Three stages further on, and Jimmy now has a comfortable buffer of over two minutes over Russell, who has set a string of fastest times after his puncture on stage five. 10 near Andreas Village, and so far only McRae or Brooks had set up faster stage times. On this stage, they share the honour. Fisher, despite still suffering from brake problems, had moved up to third place. End of the first day and 15 special stages, crews arrive back into the grandstand service area in Douglas. Jimmy McRae and Mike Nicholson were comfortably in first place, almost two minutes ahead of teammate Brooks. We asked co-driver Mike Nicholson what the first day had been like. Uh, it's been wet, it's been foggy, uh, very quick. Russell is putting a lot of pressure on us and um, while we're teammates, he wants a championship and we want the championship. It's been a pretty hectic day. For Brooks, service is routine. He and McRae have been swapping seconds all day and all he can hope for is that perhaps Jimmy will be as unfortunate as he was and collect a puncture. Fisher was having his brakes sorted out, yet again, and determined to make the deficit upon Pond the next day. The following morning, and rain, 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 as the reseeded crews tackle the Glenroy stage with McRae fastest. Brooks second fastest and Fisher third. McRae has extended his lead over Brooks. Fisher still holds third place, ahead of Pond, despite yet more brake problems. The Abilan stage immediately after service, and the battle between McRae and Brooks continues. Brooks this time fastest by three seconds. Twenty seconds behind. Fisher had suffered total brake failure, losing nearly a minute, and was down to fifth. The following stage, and Bertie Fisher has at last got brakes, driving on the limit to make up the time loss on the previous stage. Tire choice has been the biggest problem with the ever-changing weather conditions. McRae and Brooks are still locked together, the difference now down to 84 seconds. This will be the last time we will see Brooks, as on the next stage, faulty will, he crashes and is out of the event. On the previous stage, McRae had lost nearly a minute with a puncture, so perhaps Brooks was trying just too hard to get back on terms. Stage 39, South Peru. And McRae emphasises his superiority with another fastest time, shared on this occasion with Bertie Fisher. The Kronk stage has one of the most vicious little yumps on the entire rally as crews cross over a main road. 
McRae takes no chances, but still sets fastest time. Fisher has a broken gearbox mounting, which is replaced at the emergency service at the stage finish. Almost gives the golf a bloody nose in his effort to make up a two-minute loss due to a puncture. First overall, Jimmy McRae and Mike Nicholson. Second, Bertie Fisher and Austin Fraser. Third and first Group A, a splendid performance from Tony Pond and Rob Arthur. Jim McRae's have a poor start. He's got rear brake troubles, some problem with the calipers, and it's holding him back. Uh, Russell Brooks, he's languishing a bit in the 20s and complaining of a flat engine, also lack of traction due to having only two-wheel drive. Jim McRae steadily moving up the field, now seventh. Seventh, Jimmy McRae. Yesterday's brake problems now totally forgotten. It was a master cylinder. And eighth overall, Terry Cabe in the Nissan. Irvin Weber in the Manta, swinging a bit wide. And he's obviously done that before, judging by the damage to his rear wing. In front of them to disappear. Only five four-wheel drive cars left now in the top ten as Jimmy McRae presses on. Russell Brooks now, as he says, fighting it out with the Group A cars in 12th place and applying rather too much. Jimmy McRae still in 7th place. He's dropped 24 seconds on this one stage to the leaders and he's trouble with a slipping clutch. And here comes Russell, really applying pressure now. He's got the bit between the teeth, a typical Brooks drive on the RAC, fighting his way up through the board. And Phil Collins from South Wales in 14th place, moved up from a start position of 42. And now Ewa Kankan in the Toyota. He's three seconds quicker than Eklund, despite the fact he's only got two-wheel drive and the snow around, remember, as we talk to Jimmy McRae. Well, this morning everything's been going all right. Uh, we got the clutch fixed last night and uh, the car's back to 100% again. So we just hope it will stay that way. And so McRae sets off into the gathering gloom of a Yorkshire night. Of course, amongst the top ten drivers, he probably knows these stages better than anyone. Zooming out of the early morning sun, Jimmy McRae, really at home here in the border country and impressing his many local fans. Behind him, Terry Cable, Kevin Gormley, Jimmy McRae is another with a disadvantage of two-wheel drive and he lies eight minutes behind Kankin at this point, but nine minutes ahead of KB. Russell Brooks too has fought back well after his disastrous off in Wales on Monday and now holds eighth place, nine minutes behind arch-rival McRae. Russell Brooks, smiling for the first time in days, has other ideas, however, despite the nine-minute gap between them. I moved on south towards Grisdale Forest in the Lake District. And in the early morning sun, Russell Brooks takes things steady on the rock-hard icy tracks. Eighth place overall, and little chance now to improve. A disappointing result for Russell Brooks, who usually finishes a lot higher. Eighth overall is the best he can achieve this year.